So keeping organized with your files and folders when working as a media composer or an audio engineer is crucial. Uh, today we're going to have a look at file and folder structure. You don't want to be the person that are missing files or losing backups or uh, will have to go and re-record or try to fix your own mess. And even though you probably don't want to be that person, you probably are going to be <laughs> sometimes. And I've been there, I've done all the things. So I'm going to show you the, the way I like to work right now uh, with the things I've learned. But hey, if we're just meeting, my name is Tomud. And on this channel, Sifter Studios, we're doing mixing tutorials, tricks and uh, composing stuff. And we're also doing productivity talks and I bring my wife in some of the times as well. So if that sounds interesting, be sure to subscribe to get notified when I post a new video. Okay, so talking about file structure, you can you can look at this a couple of different ways. You can talk about how do you organize your project in your DAW? Uh, how do you organize your files in your folders on your hard drives? How do you uh, organize your hard drives even so you can go from a, a high up level and go really detailed, all right? Today we're looking at file and folder structure, but we'll have a look at how I organize my, my projects in my DAW in another video. Okay, so we, if we start at a really high level, these are my hard drives. Uh, so I have a local, uh, like a system drive. Uh, I have a uh, sample drive, uh, which is NVMe. And I have a couple of sample uh, drives. All of these are for my orchestral stuff, uh, film, film scoring stuff. Uh, and then I have a main SSD, one terabyte, that I use for uh, active projects. Other than that, I have a networked computer uh, that's also storing where my archives and stuff. So why don't we first look at um, my active projects? So look uh, into my main SSD, uh, and I have I I always name my folders with numbers. That way, they will uh, sort themselves uh, by by number, like not alphabetically, but by numbers and then by letters so that I can decide what order I want things in. So I have current yeah, projects and current video. Video is for YouTube and stuff. And project, current projects uh, is my working folders. So sadly, I can't show all of these uh, folders, but we can have a look in uh, one of these. So let's see. Let's have a look at this uh, EP that I'm currently working on with a band called Playground. Uh, this is what my audio engineer folder looks like. So uh, the, it's a lot more simple uh, when working with like mixing a, a track than if I'm working with a video and with a director and with a lot of different information going back and forth. I have two folders here that I have in every, every uh, project that I do. And that's one folder called files in and one folder called delivery. So files in would be every file that I've ever gotten from, uh, from the client. And the deliveries is the mixes that I'm sending back. And I like to keep them at like the top level of the, of the project folder so that I very easily can find them. I also name the deliveries in a certain way so that I can find them uh, a lot more easily, which I'll, I'll show you a little later in the video how I do that. And these are the uh, project folders for the specific uh, songs that I'm, I'm doing. So here as well, I have different versions for the different stages of the mix. Now, if you have a look at more uh, a little bit more complicated setup, uh, we can uh, go through to our uh, slave computer and open up our hard drive. Uh, here I have, this is another example, a little quick quickie. Uh, if you do X or Y, that's in the end of the alphabet. So those will go at the bottom, right? Okay, Sifter so Studios. Uh, I go into the folder tree here and I'm sorting after what the different types of work that I do. So compositions, mixes, productions, and transcriptions is more for, for my own uh, education. Portfolio is a portfolio. 
video uh, is uh, like archived videos. And at the bottom, I have a folder called template folders. So let's have a look at what's in there. So this is what I would start with um, when working on a video. If it, you know, it could be a commercial, it could be a short film, it could be whatever, right? I have these folders uh, and I'm, I'm not always using all of the folders, but I start with these. So I have one called instructions. Instructions would be for uh, emails that I'm, that I'm getting, notes that I'm getting. Uh, I, I'd like to kind of archive everything in one folder. That's, that's the idea. So that if I want to revisit this project in like in two years from now, I'll have one folder that has everything associated with uh, that project. Uh, inspiration could be inspiration for myself, or it could be inspiration from the client, reference tracks, stuff like that, images even, uh, or movies that I should watch, like inspiration for uh, the project that I'm going to work on. Temp tracks is more of the same. I don't really use the temp tracks folder uh, that often because I'm working more on commercials and short films uh, at the moment, but it's there. It's ready when when I'm ready, it's there. Folder number four is a video. I, I like to have all of my video files uh, right here. So this is this could be like a files in, but but only for for the videos. Composition. This is where I would have all of my project files or, or my main project file for what I'm actually composing. And uh, depending on if I'm mixing in the same uh, door or if I'm moving into Pro Tools, uh, then I would uh, export the audio stems and uh, then I could find the both of the files and the project for the mix in this mix folder. And finally, bounces would be my delivery folder, kind of. So I'm going from two folders when I'm working on simpler projects to like a seven folder structure when I'm working on bigger things. And I guess we could have a look at like some of the other organizing that I do. I, I love looking at how other people organize this stuff. So in my comp compositions folder, I, I have even more kind of this is kind of the archive, right? So I'm sorting uh, in a way that makes it easy to find if I need to go back. Uh, but I have short films, commercials, competitions. Competitions would be uh, like uh, like a sample library composition. Uh, I have two compositions. Uh, and uh, arrangement would be uh, not my own compositions, but arrangements of some things. Uh, ThinkSpace is where I did my master's degree in film scoring. So that's uh, have a lot of folders here, neatly organized. Uh, practice and stock and fun. This is tracks made for library music or uh, like a specific uh, product uh, music. Uh, like this is this Dungeons and Dragons soundbar I did uh, and, and all sorts of stuff. Ideas to Rescore is my way of kind of keeping ideas that I uh, think can become something sometime. And I'll just bounce an audio file so that I can work work on it sometimes if I need an idea to start from. Stream specific is even more from my live stream. I did uh, like a series on uh, a book called Making Music. <clears throat> Came to tip number five out of 74. So I have have some catching up to do. Uh, and uh, this is for the church that I, I attend. And here again, I am using letters for stuff that I want to be on the bottom. So expression maps, this is a Cubase specific thing. Uh, or template building is also just a way to organize when I'm making a new template. And that's pretty much how I do my uh, folder structure with a very specific video. I just want to show you really quick two things. One, I want to show you how I version my projects. This is a very big part of uh, file structure. Let's go back to that uh, EP that we're doing and have a look at this guy, for example. What I do when naming versions is I use uh, a whole new number for every file that I'm sending off to a client. And for my internal versions, I use uh, a decimal. So uh, 
version 0 0.1 means that I haven't sent anything to the client yet. Version 1 is my first version to the client. Version 1.1 is my own version. And version 2.0 is my second file to the client, right? So you get the picture. This is pretty new for me. I used to I just add a new number all the time, but this is uh, more information for me to see if the client, for example, wants uh, to go back a couple of versions, I'll uh, find the right project a lot easier. The second thing that I want to show you is a way to find the mixes that I've exported today. I always mark the file with uh, my initials and then mix and then a version number. This is something I really miss about uh, using a Mac. I used to be on a Mac. And on if you're on a Mac, you can save a smart search. For example, you can search for audio files that has a mix in the file name and has also been created within the last 24 hours. And then it'll just show you those files and you can just drag them into your email or WeTransfer or whatever. So I'll do the same here, uh, but it's a little bit more work. Uh, so I'm going to say name matching mix, and I'll check off partial match. Uh, I'll say date within the last five days because I don't think I've made anything in the last day. Actually, I'd go back a lot more to 25 days, all right? And here I can find my mixes and you can search um, within a folder on a Mac. You can save these and it's going to be super easy to find those uh, mixes that you're sending out. All right, that's my folder structure file management uh, for composers, audio engineers and kind of keeping organized uh, on your computer. I'll be back next week with a new tip. See you then.